Each of us has a unique story about what has brought us to a point where we would want to study leadership, to drive a need to understand what leadership is and how to become a better leader. Often it's because we have been placed in charge of others in a work role and are not sure how to best interact with our new subordinates, or it might be that we have undertaken leadership roles throughout our lives and now want to understand how leadership works and how to be more effective at it. My earliest memories of leaders and my lifelong fascination with leadership was perhaps born from watching movies and television with my father as a child. I recall Spartacus trying but ultimately failing to lead his fellow gladiators away from Rome to freedom and a new home. Captain James T. Kirk aboard the USS Enterprise going boldly where no one had been before. And George Cowley, the wise and experienced head of CI5, chasing down terrorists and criminals with his fellow professionals. Growing up, I also read many great novels that were filled with adventure and danger, but at their heart were always leaders struggling against the odds to succeed. People like Horatio Hornblower, a Napoleonic naval officer and character from C.S. Forrester's books. Richard Sharp, of the novels written by Bernard Cornwall, who was a soldier of the same period as Hornblower and who rose from being a private to leading a regiment at Waterloo. Perhaps the book that spoke most to me was Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien, which was replete with wise, noble and courageous leaders such as Gandalf, Galadriel, Elrond and Aragorn. I wanted to be like them, and they were my earliest leadership role models. Of course, as a film director or novelist, one can write the outcome you want and things just work the way you want them to. In the real world, you might say, things don't work like that. However, I would argue that I have seen my share of injustice, even evil. I've witnessed waste and incompetence, greed and selfishness. I've seen people helpless and in need of someone to simply care enough to fight for them, to take charge, to make decisions and to envisage a way forward for them. I've had the privilege of working for great leaders and terrible ones, and have seen firsthand the difference that effective leadership makes. So, I would argue there is a great deal of truth to these books and films of my youth, since they reflect the human experience, and even today movies like Invictus, 13 Days, Gandhi and Apollo 13 continue to demonstrate the power of leadership to positively affect the outcomes of millions of lives. We now live in an age where the decisions made by leaders can affect everyone on the planet. If ever there was a time in history where we needed effective leadership, it is today. However, leadership is not all about heroic deeds and adventure. Far from it. Leadership starts with those closest to you, and often with smaller but no less important things, such as volunteering to organise events or sit upon committees, to do the work that others cannot or will not do. It is here, often in volunteer positions, that you discover that you can't just order people around. It is here that you learn that you are leading people. People will give you trust if you deserve it and reciprocate that trust if you look after their interests. With their trust, you can share your vision for what needs to be done and enlist their help. It might be as simple as organising a fundraiser for a worthwhile cause that you all believe in. It could be an event at which your friends or colleagues can show off their passion and interests. It might be a workshop that you arrange at which new skills are taught, or it might be representing their interests before a government body. In any case, had you not stood up and had the courage and vision to organise these events or do these things, they most likely would not have happened and the lives of those you did this for would be less for it. Work roles, despite being given formal authority over others, are really no different. Sure, you can order people around, but you won't gain their trust nor their respect and commitment to your vision if you simply try to command it. The great events of history and those for which we are about to embark upon, such as the colonisation of Mars, may seem literally worlds apart from organising a workshop or leading your team at work. However, it is only a matter of degree and not of kind. The issues you will confront undertaking these smaller things are simply scaled down versions of the matters that confront leaders of nations, economies and enterprises. The reason we can say this with certainty is that people are people the world over, and whether we are talking about 10, 100, thousands or billions of people, fundamentally we have the same emotions and we will react in similar ways in response to effective leadership. What changes is the complexity of decision making, the need to understand and be sure of yourself, to treasure integrity, ethics and honesty, 
to understand your environment, to formulate visions and strategies, to harness your experience for the betterment of ever larger groups, and to understand the ripple effect of ramifications of your decisions to unite diverse groups, and as a result to make the world a better place for our children and those that come after us. What better undertaking could there be than being an effective leader, and what greater reward?